For this example, the problem statement is determine the moment about point B of each of the three forces acting on the beam. So as you can see, we have a beam here. We have point A and this is point B. And we have three forces that are being acted on this beam. We have a force 1 equal 375 pounds going downward. Force 2 is 500 pounds at a, at a, at a slope here. We have F3 being 160 pounds, 30 degree angle with respect to the vertical axis, and we have all the, the dimensions here at what locations are these forces being um, applied to. So now we see that the moments are going to be with respect to point O. So we solve what moment will the force F1, what moment will it cause about point B? What moment will the force 2, what moment will it cause along point B as well as the force 3 here? So let's go ahead and solve for the first one, F1. So let's go ahead and do the moment um, at point B. So this is how I'm going to be writing the moment uh, with respect to point B being caused by force F1 here. So we're going to designate um, the sign convention in this case. Counterclockwise is going to be positive. So in this case, when this force is being applied, it's being applied about 11 feet away from point B. And it would cause rotation along point B in the counterclockwise direction as you see here. So let's go ahead and solve for it. So the moment is equal to a force times the distance that's perpendicular to that force. In this case, it's just since it's along the vertical axis, the, this is already perpendicular to this beam. So it's 6 plus 5. So it's 375 pounds of force times 11 feet, which is 4,125 pound feet is the moment being caused by force 1. Now for force 2. The moment caused by force 2 with respect to the B is equal to the force times the distance that's perpendicular to that force. But keep in mind, this force is at an angle. So we have the Y component of that, and we also have an X component. Now the X component, if you can imagine here, is basically just pulling along this point. It's not going to cause any rotation. So the X component of force 2 is not going to cause a moment, only the Y component. So we're only going to be t considering the Y component, and this will be perpendicular along the, the axis of point B here. So this would be the perpendicular distance with respect to that point. So it's going to be 500 pounds force times 4 fifths because we're only considering the y ax, the y um, component of that force. So if you used um, in this case sine theta, in this case we don't we can solve for the angle of theta, but you don't have to. We could just use the opposite over hypotenuse of so 4 over 5 times the distance that's perpendicular, which is 5 feet, which gives us a moment of 2,000 pound feet. Now let's go ahead and solve for the final force, F3. So for the third force, we have 160 pounds, but in this case, we also have an X component and a Y. Now since the Y component is being directed right directly where point B is, this force will not cause any rotation about point B, only the X component in this case. This will cause rotation which will be counterclockwise with respect to the, the B. So it's 160 pounds times sine 30 degrees. In this case, we do have the angle and we just get the X component sine 30 times the, the perpendicular distance from that x component of the force, which is 0 0.5 feet. So the moment that the force F3 causes along point B is 40 pound feet. So each force um, causes a moment about point B. And if you want to get the resultant moment about that point, you just add them all up. In this case, since they are all positive. Now, for whatever reason, one moment caused, um, a force caused a moment that was 
clockwise, then in this case it will be a negative moment. You would still add up all the moments and get your resultant moment.